How about the Barnabas Christian Academy people? Ah, that's great. Look at that. How about the Walton Road Baptist Church? Oh, they're in different places here. Okay, fantastic. Good to see you. How about the Palm Vista Church of God? Hey, they've got some energy at their church. <laughs> How about the, uh, let's see, West Pines Baptist Church? Hey, there they are. Fantastic. Community Methodist. There they are. Wonderful. Good to see you. St. Peter Young at Heart. Hey, there they are. That looks like a, that looks like a bunch of troublemakers back there. I'm just, we need to get security. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's a great bunch back there. Okay, let's see. Faith Baptist Church. Hey. <laughs> That's great. And uh, let's see. HSBR Insurance. There they are. Hey, that's great. They're, they're some of our own friends right here in Hope Sound. All right. And let's see. Did I say the Kane Center? There they are. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Wonderful. Great to have you. Good to have all of you here. Now, you just saw a video, and that video was presented by our premier sponsor, not just for the Singing Christmas Tree, but for our entire concert series throughout the season. That's Christian Healthcare Ministries. We are so thankful for their sponsorship. Over the years, they have poured thousands of dollars into this production. So let's give Christian Healthcare Ministries a big hand. <laughs> yes, indeed. Not only have they kindly sponsored this series, but they also provide health care for all of the employees of these ministries right here in Hope Sound. And so uh, we're very thankful. I'm a member of Christian Healthcare Ministries, and my family are members of, of Christian Healthcare Ministries. So we know from firsthand experience that they will take care of you, and we highly recommend them. They have representatives at either of these back doors. There are displays set up out there. And then we also have our business partner sponsor, and that is Sea Winds Treasure Coast Funeral Home. And there's a gentleman named L.C. Campbell. Is he in the building yet? Okay, he may be outside. He was greeting people. So uh, Mr. L.C. Campbell is their representative, and he will be here tonight and, and throughout the remainder of the singing tree. And uh, Treasure Coast Sea Winds are very, very professional. Uh, we all hate to think of end-of-life planning, but I'll tell you, you need to do it. You need to do it and get it done. I've been an executor, so I understand what all is involved in that. And do your executor a favor and plan ahead, let me tell you. And Treasure Coast Sea Winds is one of the best in the business. We've worked with them here at our church numerous times. How many of you like motorcycles? Yeah, quite a few of you. Do you know Treasure Coast Sea Winds now has a Harley hearse? Is that not the coolest thing ever? <laughs> <laughs> just shows how sensitive they are to the needs of their customers. So be sure and talk to Treasure Coast Sea Winds. All right. Now, let me just mention to you in your bulletin, you have next, uh, this season's lineup of concerts. So if you want to take that out and just look at that, that's this green brochure right here. And let me just tell you some of the concerts that we have coming up. The Convention Quartet, if you like Traditional Southern Gospel Quartet music. Oh, it's some of the greatest music around. January 13 at 7 p.m. It'll be in the auditorium behind us, the smaller auditorium up in the front. Convention Quartet. Don't miss it. Tim Zimmerman and the King's Brass. They are a brass group that plays a blend of classical and jazz and gospel and patriotic, and they will knock your socks off. They are incredible. And uh, you, you will not want to miss that. That's January the 27th. That'll be right here in this auditorium. So be sure and be here for that. And then, by popular demand, we have the Booth Brothers coming back. How many of you like the Booth Brothers? Yeah, they've got some fans I hear out there already. That's wonderful. We filled this place up the last time they came. They are just a smooth gospel men's trio. They sound a lot like the Gatlin Brothers, if you like the Gatlin Brothers. Uh, got a little touch of Western swing in there, and they're just phenomenal. So... Don't miss the Booth Brothers, February 17. Then the Gospel Celebration, February 24. That's a variety program that uh, features our choir. It features trios and quartets. And my sisters and I do a little singing. We have a guest artist uh, group coming this year. And that's the Heath Brothers. And they're little guys. 
but they sing like you would not believe. You don't want to miss the Heath Brothers and the gospel celebration. It's toe-tapping gospel music. How many of you like songs like I'll Fly Away and all that kind of stuff? That toe-tapping gospel, yeah, that's what you'll get at the gospel celebration. February 24, right here in this building. Be sure and come. Then the piano extravaganza, one of our most popular concerts ever. Six grand pianos on stage playing simultaneously, and it is a phenomenal experience. Up to 24 hands playing at one time. And uh, this year we're featuring Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker as the main program, but there'll be a lot of other stuff thrown in, gospel stuff. You've never heard the Stars and Stripes forever until you've heard it played by 24 hands on six grand pianos simultaneously. That is an awesome experience. So don't miss the piano extravaganza, March 9 and 10. We would love to have you for that. Now, we've talked about sponsorships, but who's the number one sponsor of these events? You are. That is right. All of these events are done on a free will offering basis. So in your program, you have an envelope. We would love for you to uh, support us if you feel you're able to do so. If you can't, that's okay too. But we'd also love for you to put your information down on that envelope because that helps us to keep in contact with you and let you know when upcoming events are going to happen. We will not share that information with anyone else. Uh, none of that kind of stuff. We'll keep it secure, but we would love to keep in touch with you. So we'd be happy to talk to you about that. A couple of housekeeping items before we get rolling here. First of all, if you would, please turn off your cell phones because that interrupts the program and just makes everything awkward. So we'd love it if you turn off your cell phones, not only because the noise can make it awkward, but also the frequencies can sometimes interfere with our wireless microphones. So it's just really helpful if, if you just turn off the cell phone. That'd be a wonderful blessing. Also, try to be conscious of those in front of you as you rise to take pictures and so on. Please try not to obstruct the view of those in front of you too much. Um, much of this room is a flat floor, and so just keep that in mind if you would. Also, the restrooms. If you need the restrooms, they're right out either of these back doors. You just turn, as soon as you go out these doors, you turn to your right or to your left on this side and enter into that hallway and the restrooms are back in that hallway. We ask you not to use the center doors because those are reserved for the cast. So, real quickly, we're three ministries here, Hope Sound Bible Church, Hope Sound Bible College and Christian Academy and FEA Ministries. And uh, we have a representative from FEA Ministries that's going to come and pray at this time. While he's coming, let me just mention we have a beautiful little bookstore just right out that door and across the parking lot. So stop by the bookstore on your way out, do a little Christmas shopping, get a little coffee or some wassail or some snacks. And uh, thank you for coming and Merry Christmas to you all. And on behalf of FEA Ministries and all our missionaries that serve in many countries around the world, we want to say to you a very Merry Christmas and a joy-filled time of year. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the opportunity we have to gather together here tonight and to spend a little time reflecting and, and understanding even more deeply what the real reason for the season is. Sure, it's nice to have family traditions and it's nice to enjoy the things that we do around this time of year, but ultimately... The reason we celebrate Christmas is because you, God, were willing to send your own son, Jesus, to come to earth, to live and to die ultimately so that we could come into a right relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus, that you now sit at the right hand of the Father and you're rejoicing with us as we celebrate this time of year. Tonight in this building, there may be some who do not know you. There may be some who need encouraged. And I pray, Lord, that you would just come. Holy Spirit, would you settle into this building and may we sense your presence as we worship you tonight and as we celebrate this special time. I pray, Lord, that you would be with every one of the cast members and would we just have a time of celebration and enjoying what you are doing and what this is all about this time of year, I pray in your name. Amen.
It's Christmas. Oh, what a wonderful time of the year. It's a time when our hearts are filled with love and our homes are filled with joy and laughter. It's a season of wonder, grandeur, and splendor. There are nativity scenes and childlike dreams, crackling fires and midnight choirs. The lights on the tree are sparkling and the painted ornaments are shimmering. And oh, the aroma of the fragrant pine. Of that gingerbread baking and hot cider steaming. There are simmering scents. And elegant presents. Christmas is all of this and more. It's sharing and giving. Wrapping and loving. It's church bells ringing. And carolers singing. It's children's plays. And horse-drawn sleighs. It's angels descending. And a love that's transcending. So tonight, we invite you to unwrap the glory and share in the story. Let us unite our hearts and our voices in this grand celebration. It's, it's Christmas. Christmas. That's us. All righty. Here you go. Can you sign here for me? I wonder who this is from. I have no idea, sir. Merry Christmas. Same to you. 
Is that a present I see? I think so. Oh, I'll, I'll take that right off your hands. Hmm. I wonder what it could be. I bet it's something edible. Sounds good. Your guess is as good as mine. Let's open it. Don't have to tell me twice. Hmm. <gasps> Ooh, look at this. I bet it's cookies, or maybe brownies, or maybe both. And since you went on that huge crash diet, I don't have to share any of them with you. Well, it isn't cookies, and it certainly isn't brownies. This is a fruit cake. <laughs> you know, the chewy, crunchy, gooey, hard to swallow kind. Yeah, and which one of you is the fruit cake that sent this to us? Now, Sarah, don't be rude. We'll find something to do with it. Yeah. Give it to the dog. That's not nice. <clears throat> the postman came this morning. A package had arrived. I thanked the man and shook his hand. Then I went inside. I tore into the box to see what was in there. That's when all of my excitement turned into
dreaming tonight of a place I love even more than I usually do. And although I know it's a long road back, I promise you. All right, I've had enough. I've had my fill of your nostalgic Christmas carols. I'll be home for Christmas. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> Sarah, Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. The celebration carries on for over a month, bringing people together in wonderful ways. Oh, yes, like the fanfare and the festivals and the fantasy of Christmas. It's just an excuse for you to celebrate a lot of merriment when it's all actually a money-making scheme that you are buying right into. But, speaking of buying things, does my absolute favorite big brother need any suggestions on what to buy me for Christmas? Speaking of buying into things. <laughs> no, I don't need any of your pricey gift suggestions. But Christmas is about so much more than that, so much more. It, at its heart, is about an historic event. The angels came down from heaven and serenaded the shepherds on the hillside, telling them that the long-awaited Messiah had come. He had come to our planet. The greatest gift the world would ever receive had come, Jesus Christ. Well. When, when you put it like that, it may make a little more sense. I suppose maybe I could afford to focus a little more on the true meaning of Christmas. This song says it beautifully. It says, this one sacred day will forever stay the birth of our Savior and King. Just a winter holiday Or a season filled with fun and fantasy Call it anything you wish But December 25th Will always be Christmas to me It will be Christmas to me. It will always be Christmas to me. This one sacred day will forever stay the birth of my Savior and King. It will Christmas to me When I see the lights I still think about the night That a wondrous star shone over Bethlehem In the children's caroling I still hear the angels sing Announcing Christ is born once again, it will always be Christmas to me. It will always be Christmas to me. This one sacred day will forever stay. The birth of my Savior.
Well, that's right at the heart of what we have the singing Christmas tree for. We want Jesus Christ to be right at the center of Christmas. There are lots of things that press in. Lots of people that are changing their mind. Happy holidays. Nothing wrong with that as long as you don't leave Christ out. But our passion tonight is to remind you that right at the heart of Christmas, is Jesus Christ. That's why we have this celebration. As has already been mentioned, we are actually three organizations here. Can you believe this? We have been here on the Treasure Coast for over 55 years. Three separate organizations using buildings all together, working together, but having our own boards, our own presidents or pastors or whatever. And we haven't killed each other, and we haven't fought, and we haven't split. We're still here. Isn't that incredible? Well, really, we think that's the way Christianity ought to work. And I'm very, very honored to be a part of this wonderful organization. My name is Dan Stetler. I'm president of Hope Sound Bible College and Hope Sound Christian Academy. Hope Online, if you're interested in that. You've already heard from the representative of FEA, FEA, covers, uh, it's a big umbrella that covers Seabreeze Community, Seabreeze Camp Meeting, uh, Hope International Missions. They have missionaries in over 20 countries, uh, over 30 missionaries around the world. This is an amazing place. Did you know that from right here, for many years, went out a broadcast that blanketed all of communist China? Isn't that amazing? From right here. And we literally have young people who've gone from the halls of Hope Sound Bible College to serve all over the world, all over the world. That's what we're all about. But you know what? We, we felt like for too long we were a very well-kept secret here on Gomez Avenue, kind of off the main drag there. And uh, we, felt like, we felt like we ought to do something for the Treasure Coast. And so we under the leadership, the capable leadership of Dr. Paul Peake, we started this singing Christmas tree. Tons of work, many, many people. But we found within our organizations, we had some incredibly gifted, talented people. Do you know all of these people, the people who built this thing, that built these things, the people who run these, these effects and lights and all of that, they're our people. We go to church with them every Sunday. We eat with them in the cafeteria from time to time. We're blessed. We have some friends that have joined us. There are some friends from surrounding churches that have come to be a part. But we want to we wanna present a gift. We want to do something in the Christmas season. We're unabashedly religious. 
We're unabashedly, unashamedly Christian, and we want to help to keep Christ in Christmas. Are you in favor of that? <laughs> I know you are. That's why you're here. That's why you literally come by the thousands to this tree year after year after year. How many of you have never been here before? Goodness, what in the, where have you all been hiding? I want to know. You must live under, well, I started saying under a rock, but there aren't many rocks around here. It's sand. <laughs> it's amazing to me. I, I've said that several years in a row. Those of you who've been here know it, but I never cease to be amazed every year. There's an astonishing number of people who've never been here before. We're so happy you've come, and we hope this won't be your last time. Now, we didn't make any charge. We advertise it that way, and we honor that. The reason we do that is that we don't want anybody to be kept away from the singing Christmas tree because they couldn't afford to come. You say, well, how do you pay salaries? There aren't any. These are volunteers. That's right. You say, well, working with volunteers is like chasing a string, pushing a string. No, it's not when you got people who have passion about it and they start back in late August and they work all up through this time. Some people spend day and night here the last week to get things ready. But it's worth it. These exciting evenings with you are worth it. The electricity in the air, realizing that we're getting through, we're accomplishing our purpose. So we don't want anybody to be left out. We want everybody to become, be able to come. Sometimes we bring buses of children in, children who would never be able to afford to pay, but they love the snow and the lights and all of that stuff. We want it to be that way. But it obviously takes money to operate this. The electric bills are huge. We give a few expense type stipends, no salaries, but we have people who pour themselves passionately. What we'd like to say to you tonight is, if you can help us, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll make a deal with you. Anything beyond covering expenses, we'll put back into the singing tree. I was just, just thinking when we started, we didn't have this, this beautiful tapestry here. We didn't have many, many of the lights and projectors and the snow machines and all of those kind of things. We didn't have any of that stuff. But as we have carefully, frugally planned and paid our bills, we've had a little money left over here and there to buy this and buy that. And people tell me every night it's better every year. That's our goal. And you can help us do that. You can help us do that because right now we're going to ask the ushers to come forward and we're going to take a free will offering. You know what that is? That's an offering where if you will to give, you can. If you don't will to give, you don't have to. No big deal. Come, enjoy it, love it, go, do whatever you like to do. But if you can help us, oh, if you could stick in $10 for you and $10 for your wife or your husband, it would really, really be great. And we'll put it back in so you will benefit from it next year. Wait till you see the new lights you helped us get. Oh, they're amazing, just amazing. And we're gonna keep on doing that because we want you to keep coming back. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for being a part. And may God bless you in this Christmas season. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you've given us so many good and perfect gifts. We could never, ever repay you. We don't even talk in those terms. But tonight, we're here to represent you. We want to represent the joy, the tradition, the happy songs, the gifts, the decorations, all of that. But, oh, Lord, woven through all of that, we want to honor the Christ of God who came among us that we might be able to become the sons and daughters of God. Bless us these our dear friends give tonight. And may we use all of this for the promotion and propagation of the glorious message of Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, the 20, 2017 Singing Christmas Tree, Adore.
Jesus, you are our king. You came, but not the way we expected. You didn't come in might or in power. You came in weakness. You didn't come to be served. You came to serve. You didn't come in on a throne holding a scepter. You came for a cross. You came and you looked like us. Jesus, you were exactly the king we needed. For you came exactly as a king should come, full of love, full of grace, and full of truth. Lord, we want no other king but you. For you alone are glorious in all your ways. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Christ Jesus came down from heaven above. He was born in a manger, this gift of love. Come, let us adore him, your life to him bring. Give him all of your heart and worship the king.
We must go tell everyone, guys, the Prince of Peace is here, the Messiah we've waited for. We have to tell everyone what the angels have shown us today. that choir spectacular. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and that song must have been from Jamaica or somewhere like that because I really liked that island flavor they had going on. <laughs> but they were singing about three characters that have always intrigued me. And who might that be? Well, they're known as the three wise men. Is there really such a creature? I'm kidding, Paul is. <laughs> anyway, didn't they supposedly come in from some far away distant land riding in on their camels just to see the little baby in the town of Bethlehem? 
Yes, in fact, historians aren't sure exactly who or what they were. Some think they were kings, others think they may have been priests. But one thing we know about them is that they studied astronomy. They were very knowledgeable, they were learned men because they had studied the stars and they had followed that one brilliant star all the way to the place where Jesus was. Now, now wait just a second. You're gonna try and convince me that they had telescopes back then. How would they even know which star to follow? They could have ended up anywhere. Well, they weren't simply astronomers. They also were knowledgeable about the scriptures. They had studied the prophecies. There shall come a star out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. They knew the prophecies concerning the coming Messiah. They had studied and they followed and they sought after their promised Messiah. Well, if that's true, then this then wasn't just a one-time event. For men and women, even today, are still seeking after him, aren't they? That's right. And in fact, this is the greatest promise of Christmas, that those who seek him will find him when they seek him with their whole heart.
From God's heaven to a manger, from great riches to the poor, came the Son of God to seek and save. that shall not die. My soul shall sing throughout the endless ages with choirs extolling this great From a loving Heavenly Father To a world that knew Him not Came the man of sorrows Christ the Lord And in my wonderings Jesus found me, bought my soul with his own blood, and gave to me a peace this world could not afford. Redeeming love, a love that no that shall not die. My soul shall sing throughout the endless ages with choirs extolling this great love.
Good evening. Are you enjoying the presentation tonight? I'm Matt Ellison, a pastor of Hope Sound Bible Church, and it is a privilege of mine to serve with five other associate pastors, one of which is the minister of music who is directing the choir and the tree tonight. Let's give him a round of applause. In the book of Hosea, we find a beautiful love story. Hosea and Gomer, they met each other, they fell in love, and soon after, they got married. Hosea and Gomer, they had three children together, but, but somewhere along the way, she became unfaithful to her husband. This hurt Hosea deeply, and because of her unfaithfulness, uh, it, it just began to wear on him because it was not just a one-time deal. This was something that happened again and again and again. And, and finally, his hurt is so deep that he calls his children together to see if they could somehow talk some sense into their mother. But even after the children's attempt of an intervention their, to their mother, Gomer, she says to them, I will not stop chasing after my lovers. She's blatant. She's selfish. She's ungrateful. She is focused seemingly on no one but herself. She loved chasing after her lovers because it, it brought such a thrill, howbeit a short-lived, cheap thrill. She loved the way that her lovers showered her with gifts. They were worthless gifts, really, gifts that were given for one purpose only, and that was her suitors used their gifts to get only what they wanted she wore her gifts. She flaunted them every chance she could in front of her husband. But yet, through all of the pain and all of the embarrassment, Hosea still loved his wife. He decided that he was going to win her back. He wanted to help her remember the joy and the happiness and the love that they once had. So he set out to do so. He showered her with many great gifts. He spoke tenderly to her. He loved her. He did everything within his power to woo her back. The story goes that one day that Gomer finds herself for sale on an auction block. She had become such a slave to others. She was finding out through all of her infidelity there wasn't as much fun and the thrill was gone and she was now just a, an object to the highest bidder. The gifts from her lovers had ceased. She now went to the highest bidder, and instead of passion and thrill, she found abuse and harshness. She began to reminisce of a better day with her husband, Hosea. She began to realize how good she really did have it in the safe and loving arms of her husband. Oh, to be there once again. As she is reminiscing of better days, the handler pushes her, Gomer, to the stand, and the auctioneer begins to take some bids. In her mind, she thinks, who will it be this time? Did she really even care anymore? How much lower could she go? Was there any shame she could face that she hadn't already faced? As she's thinking these thoughts, the auctioneer says, sold. And Gomer is escorted off of the stand, given to her new master. As she turned to see who her night would be spent with, she about faints as she looks into the loving, tender, caring eyes of her husband, Hosea. I can see her as she quickly hangs her head in shame, refusing to meet his gaze because of her embarrassment. She tries to awkwardly cover up the best possible. It's okay, Hosea says. I've got you. No more are you a slave. I have purchased you. I have bought you back, not for you to be my slave, but that you can be free from the life of misery and wickedness in which you live. All, I, all you need I have, and I can and will supply. This is an amazing story. It tells the story of the redeeming love in which we've just heard sung about. Redeeming love that knows no limit. Redeeming love that knows no end. It's a beautiful picture of God's amazing grace. In this story, we see Gomer as she walks away from one who genuinely loves her. 
We see because of her walking away, her life of wickedness. We see her as she's standing on an auction block, looking back over her wasted years, years that should be filled with happiness and joy and contentment, pleasant memories. They're filled with nothing but regret and haunting memories of shame. We see her standing there, walking away, her wicked life, her wasted years. But as she's there on the auction block, we see her all washed up. You see, she's no longer the beautiful, attractive woman that she used to be. Sin has taken its toll on her. She never dreamed that she would be standing on an auction block. Men used to want to be around her. Now they're bidding on her just because her beauty is gone and they no longer want her for her beauty but for a cheap thrill. I just want to remind us here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that sin still has a way of taking the beauty out of life. And in place of the beauty, it places hurts and scars and bitterness, regret, unwanted addictions, the feeling of being used and abused. That is exactly what sin does when we walk away from God who loves us. But yet, when it is all said and done, after her walking away, after her wicked lifestyle, her wasted years that brought along with it emptiness and and brought a hollowness to her eyes, Eyes that were once filled with brightness and life and passion. After all of this, this is the amazing thing. Hosea, her husband, still wanted her. That, my friend, is what is so amazing about the Christmas story. Hosea wanted her so badly that he was willing to humble himself publicly to buy her back. Regardless of what she had done, regardless of how she looked, regardless of where she had been, realizing that in the very crowd in which he was standing, there were men who had known her and were there trying to purchase her, but yet he stands up and makes the purchasing price. Not tonight, boys. Not again. She's mine. She's back where she belongs. I love her, and I'm taking her home. This story wonderfully gives us a picture of us and God. We are the ones who walked away from God, who loved us, one who loves us with an everlasting love. And in walking away, we turn to a life of sin, following the lights, the glamour, and the promised thrill, only to find that the pot of gold that is at the supposed to be at the end of the rainbow, it is never there. It's always over the next hill. It's going to be in the next event. It's going to be in the next big thing. It's going to be in the next fleeing. But as we continue to chase and chase, our continual unfruitful chasing brings to us a failure of complete satisfaction. And we soon realize that the road that we're on, it's been a long time. It's a hard time. A time has come by and it's slipped by so quickly. And still we find no true satisfaction. The glitz, the glamour, the shiny thrill is gone. Life is hard at best, frustrated looking over the wasted years of our life. We take a hard look at ourselves, and we see how sin has taken its toll on us. There are individuals tonight who have diseases because of sin. Many people who've lived a life of sin, they look uh, uh, aged beyond their years. Many have scars of broken relationships, pain of a lost love, ghosts of addiction. They just can't shake. We are at a place where Gomer was. Nothing is thrilling anymore. Life is dull. We want out. But who would have us? Where is the way out? Who could love us with all of our baggage? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because tonight we're here celebrating the Christmas season. It is a season that our culture has hijacked for commercial purposes. But ladies and gentlemen, when you scale back all of the advertisements, the hustle and bustle, and all of the glamour, you find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. No ordinary baby, but a baby that was born of a virgin. The Son of God became human. He came because God sent him out of a heart that is overflowing with love who were 
hurting just like Gomer was on that auction block. Lost, sick, hurting, in pain, searching for true love and happiness and fulfillment. He came to purchase our redemption by dying on an old rugged cross, rising again three days later, victorious over sin, hell, and death. He came to set us free from the bondage of sin, free from the addictions and the vices that had overtaken our lives, free from the fear of death so that we could have life, so that we could once more enjoy life and cherish relationships and once again know a joy and a peace and a hope. Tonight, as I look across this crowd, I just can't help but think that maybe there's someone here who may be standing in the shoes of Gomer. You know what it is to feel lost, hurting. You're tired of chasing the elusive pot of gold. You just wish that once again you could experience true joy, fulfilling happiness. But let me remind you that Jesus has paid a great price for you. He's paid for you with his blood, and he wants to make you his tonight. This Christmas season, we're getting ready to go to the Lord in prayer, and, and we're going to bow our heads. And I would just wonder if there would be someone here this evening that would say, you know what, that's me. I'm lost. I'm without hope. There's no peace. I have a life of regret. It seems as if I have wasted years. I want you to know it can stop right now, and you can be walking in a new light, a new love, a new peace, and a new hope if you would but ask Jesus into your heart and follow after him in the arms of his love and kindness and grace. If you're here tonight and that would be you, as we bow our heads, pray with us, ask Jesus into your heart, and I promise you this, you will never, never be the same. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege we have of, of being here in, in this atmosphere, celebrating the, the reason of the season, the birth of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the great physician who's come to make the sick well, to, to raise the dead to life, to make the dumb to hear and, uh, the, and the deaf to hear, the dumb to talk, the blind to see. Dear Lord, you've come to make a change in our lives. And dear God, if there would be anyone here tonight that does not know you as their person, personal Savior. We pray that, oh God, as we pray this prayer, they would pray from their heart. And dear Lord, they would ask you to forgive them of their sins. They would ask you, dear Lord, to take them back where you want them to be so desperately in your loving care. And dear Lord, as they would leave this place tonight, may they know, dear God, you and your love and your joy and your hope and happiness. And dear Lord, as you will do this in the hearts and lives of individuals, we will thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If there's anyone here tonight who would like to talk with the pastor after the service, meet us up front here, see an usher, they'll be sure to get you in the right direction. If you're here tonight and you prayed that prayer and asked Jesus into your heart, rest assured that your life will never be the same if you follow him. And if you have a chance, let an usher know, let a pastor know, email the church, let them know that you've made an, had an eternal change in your life because of this presentation and this gospel tonight. Thank you so much for coming. If you're here tonight, you're new in the area, Area and you're looking for a home church, I just want to tell you, Hope Sound Bible Church is a wonderful place to call home. We're glad that you're here. Everyone joining online, we're glad that you're here. Thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of this presentation and let's continue to rejoice in God's amazing grace.
that saves us.
Have you enjoyed the 2017 Singing Christmas Tree? <laughs> we are so glad you've come. Our prayer is, may the Christ of Christmas fill your homes, your hearts and lives this Christmas with his peace and joy. The Lord bless you. Thank you for coming. Let me just say to you, as you're leaving tonight, there are 750 cars out there. You saw that on the sign. So why don't you take a little while and go over there to that beautiful little gift shop. They're having a 20% off sale. You can find out what wassail tastes like and coffee tastes like and get you some gifts. And let all those cars go, then go in peace and safety. Thank you again for coming. May you have a wonderful Christmas. Merry Christmas.